fave searches and how to create them. I think you've pretty much covered everything. What I'm going to do is sort of drill down into one of those areas where that he had mentioned early in the presentation, the custom sub list and the power of it. And basically, it's just a follow on to Gary because it's uh, the ability to attach a save search results to transactions and entry forms. My name is Margie Kuminos, and I work for PlantScan Corporation. I've been using NetSuite, implemented it for our company back in 2002, and have been using it ever since. So I think it was actually called NetLedger back then when I started. I'm also on the board of the Rocky Mountain NetSuite user group. So custom sublists, uh, very powerful, very easy to use, especially now that you are all experts in how to create safe searches, even if you had never done one prior. I um, do want to have you all thinking, if, if you're still on and with us, thank you. By the way, Gary started with one president and I'm finishing up with a new president. So, um, but I want you all thinking if you are familiar with custom safe searches, please put in the chat window, maybe uh, what you're using custom sub lists for. And I'd like to add that to a slide that you'll be seeing later down in this presentation. So before we actually get started, I'd like to show you examples. So then we can dig in and actually see how it's done. So if I go over to this screen here, mm -hmm. I'm on an invoice here, and I don't know about you all, but I get calls every so often from our customers going, hey, we have this invoice XYZ, and we need to know, we need the packing slip. So normally what you need to do is you normally need to go over to the sales order. Then you need to go to related <clears throat> records or history tab. Um, remember, we implemented back in 2002 and I need to go to fulfillments and invoices, and then I can pick the item fulfillment and maybe reprint it from there. But with sublists, it provides the capability to actually create a safe search and attach it to the invoice itself. So now I have this fulfill link and I can go directly to the item fulfillment itself and print, saving several steps in it. I do want you to notice that of the sales order field is actually called created from. And that's gonna be key in a few minutes when we're looking at the save search itself. Because as I said, it's a very simple process. You make a save search, but you have to do something very special in that save search, which we'll be talking about. The next example that I wanted to show is in a purchase order. So this purchase order has uh, you know, many tabs. And one of those is the uh, related records in the related records, you can see the receipts and bills. But notice that you can't modify this, not like some of the other sub, when you can uh, pick a different view and you can modify it. This comes from NetSuite and it is limited to what you see here. So what I've done instead is I've created two, two different custom sub lists that I've attached. One that has the receipts and bills and just for the purpose of this uh, tips and tricks section, I'm added the terms and added the memo. So this is how, if you see something on a tab that already exists, that is not editable, that you cannot you know, add additional fields, this is how you do it through this custom sub list. Additionally, I want to be able to see the item receipts details. So here where I see two item receipts, here I can see those document numbers and I can not only see the, um, I can see the date and everything else, but I can also drill down to that sublist level on the actual uh, PO itself and say what, what was received at which date. So I see that a couple of these items were received on 225 where the rest of these items were received on 226. <clears throat> The next uh, example I wanted to quickly show is this uh, purchase order. This is a blanket purchase order. And I know I think NetSuite has a way to do blanket purchase orders now, but using this, the default purchase order, um, using the default purchase order, I had created a custom field years ago that said this is a blanket purchase order. Now, notice that I have this uh, tab, product releases. And 
it looks like a custom sublist, but it's not. It's actually a parent-child record for, created by using a custom field. So, and you can tell that because it actually allows you to create a new product release from here. So basically, this is a purchase order for 2,200 items. And at various dates and times over the year, we release them and we, you know, ship it, the, basically the custom record. So this is going against a custom record that is linked to the purchase orders. And it says who you're shipping to, when you need to ship, the quantity, et cetera. But for the purposes of this tips and tricks section, I also created a product release tab, <clears throat> sub tab, that actually shows that same information. And it shows that information, but you notice there's no way to um, uh, create a new product release record or a new custom record um, release. And it also tells you how many, the difference is this also gives you the quantity. So I see that 1,934 have been released and which means that I could still do a few more releases for this. So let's go on back to the uh, main present, to the presentation itself back here. and talk a little bit about more about the tip, this tip and trick, the custom sublist. So basically it's just a method to add a custom sublist to any transaction or entry form, it uses a safe search. It displays on uh, forms and entry forms, transaction forms and entry forms, standard and custom records. So you can also add a sublist to a custom record. And toward the end of this, I will actually be showing you how we do that. So the ability to create the, the sublist, to be able to create custom sublists, you have to have the permissions that Gary talked about earlier with, for safe searches, but you also have to have the custom sublist permission, or you can be the system administrator. You still need permission to see the underlying records or the results will show nothing. Here are some examples of use. And this is where I would love it if you all could add into the chat window, window and we will uh, add that to our presentation of when you can use this or why you might want to use it, the, the power of it. So the list fulfillments of invoice record doesn't normally show on the invoice record. So that's why you might want to use it. Here's another powerful one. And I have examples of this. I couldn't actually show you in my production account because it's a production account and I couldn't show you for a customer. But this shows the invoices and credit memos on a customer record highlighting past due. Because normally when you go to related records, you can see, oh, I can look at all of them or I can see purchase orders or I can see invoices or I could actually modify that view and have a, a list, a multi-select list. But if I know that I always wanna be able to quickly see invoices and credit memos and then highlight to see past due, then that would be a perfect reason to use the custom sublist. Or here's an example, if you, if, you use, um, if you use the manufacturing and you use a serialized, if you used assembly, you can see the assembly of all the records of, um, but it also show like what's obsolete, what products are obsolete. So you go to an item and you look at the assembly record and the components and you see all of them, but you're also seeing when it's been, a, a part has been obsoleted or effective date. But if you only wanna see the current bomb, that's another reason. Um, like I said before, listing item receipts or anything with additional fields that you can't normally add, if you see a tab, that's a reason to do it. So here's a list of things that I came up with or I looked through Sweet Answers and said, okay, what are people looking at? But if you can add in your, yours, I'd love to add that to this presentation before we post it. And as I said, it's a two-step process. You create a safe search and then you go to this other page that shows that's a sub list where you actually add the sub list, where you say what search are you using? What is the label on that search? What um, tab do you want it to appear on? And what record is it related to? The first thing with the safe search, very simple. The one caveat, the one important thing you need to remember is that the first filter needs to tie to that record. So if you're looking at transactions and you're pulling from other transactions, 
or if you're pulling from a custom record, that first field in the in that uh, filter must be a list record type that will connect it to that. If, if the first field isn't even a list record type, it's never even going to show up on the screen below in step two. Someone needs to mute themselves. I'm hearing uh, voices or papers turning. I'll find I it. Appreciate I'll find that. It. Thank you. So let's go on back to the to this over here, and let's look at that uh, sublist. And the way you get there is you just type sublist. And for me, two pop up. I don't want this first one, even though you think, oh, that's the one you want to go to. That one shows it in a strange method that brings up a form if you want a new one. And quite honestly, I find that a little bit cumbersome to work. But if you just select sublists, then you get this really nice entry fields that shows all of them. And notice that you can attach sublists. You have to specify if it's a transaction, an entity, an item or CRM type record. So you can see that based on the type of transaction, these fields across, you know, what it relates to, whether it's a sale, an item fulfillment, these change based upon the record types. So for entities, it's for customers, et cetera, um, items, it's for um, expense item kit, assembly items, inventory items, et cetera. So if that first field is not a uh, is not a list record type field it won't show in this list at all if it is it'll show even if it's not really meaningful to this so these all of these can't be sub lists so what I do in my safe searches is I actually uh, pre I uh, prefix it with the word sub list so I can easily find it and know and then I know that other people won't delete it and go, oh, I don't think anyone uses this anymore because maybe it's used in a sublist. So if we go over to now, let's take a look before we drill into this. Let's take a look at a saved search. This is the one that I showed you with the item fulfillments where it shows the item fulfillment. And if you remember on this invoice, it only showed one record. It's still considered a sublist. Even if the search returns one record, it's still a sublist. You could have had 10 records. In this case, it didn't. So back to the save search. All I wanted was to know what fulfillments are there. So I have the description. I, I say the type is item fulfillment. I want that main line is true. I know that Gary talked about that main line. Uh, the results, I just want to see these three fields. And then the available filters. This is the key that ties it together. So it's created from and, it, and I want to show it in the filter region only for test purposes. So while you're testing this, if I preview this, you can see that I can look immediately and go, oh, the filter, it is a list record, it's a drop down. But if I pick some other field and go, oh, it's a, it's a um, text field, then I know it's never going to work. So that's why I like to leave that there. Mm -hmm during testing and then I actually usually remove it before you know after I know it's working and I can see it in the sub list then I actually go back usually and uncheck this the reason why I have created from goes back to that original uh, reason first let's take a look at this custom sub list notice that for the fulfill link it's going to the sales record that's because there is no choice for invoice record here. So it's, this is probably the little bit more complex one. For a customer, you notice that I use, uh, well, if you were to look at the, we'll look at that search soon. I didn't have to have anything, no field there because it's, it's embedded in it and it's the name. So going back to this transaction one, because I have to go to the sales record, because that's where it's created from, and then if you remember, this field is actually called created from. That's how we know to tie it together with that. And it uses the internal ID and it's usually by default. So the other one I wanted to show is this customer invoices and credit memo. For that, which I actually have a screenshot for later on, you'll see that the available filters I used was name. So I used the name field because if you're thinking about it logically, you go, okay, I've got a customer. 
and it's got transactions applied to it. But how am I going to look at that, those transactions? Oh, the name of the customer is going to be in all of those other transactions. So that's how you know to use the name field. So this is basically the join field. So going back to the custom sub list, <clears throat> I just wanted you to see that uh, this is the, the label, the fulfill link that you saw over here. So you can see it says fulfill link. So that's how that relates. Then the um, it's on the items tab. So once again, if we go back to this invoice, you can see that it's on the items tab and the fulfill link. So that is how you do it. Um, the next thing I just wanted to go back to is the presentation here. Um, caveat, things that you be, should be cautioned about. One I just talked about with the fact that an invoice actually is coming from a sale and that's why you have to use the created from. Sometimes this auto populates. So even if you create one that you don't want to use the created from field, I've found that when I create a, add a sub list, all of a sudden it adds the created from field and I don't even notice it and I'm going, why isn't it working? And I go back and I go, oh, NetSuite populated that field. So I just remove it and suddenly it works. So here are some examples. This is the example that I said I can't actually show you the results um, in production system since I don't have a sandbox and I don't have a, the demo, our demo account is, is broken <laughs> for the Rocky Mountain NetSuite user group. So there's some scripts that have caused it not to work. But here is the safe search that I've used. And you can see that I have not only the available filter of name, but the due date because I want it highlighted. So I've got a few examples in here. In each of these examples, I show the safe search then I show the associated sublist, and then I show the results. So here you can see for this customer on, the, on this tab, I have under the general, because that's where I put it, invoice and credit memos, and it'll show all credit memos and all invoices showing those that are past due. The next one uh, is the one that I showed you. I don't need to go through that, but this is just so you'll have it in the presentation. And then the final one I wanted to show you, which I actually showing a safe search that is going to be attached to a product, to a custom record. So it's a little bit different. So here I have the custom record. And if I want to attach a sub list, I create a safe search like you'd normally create. But then in order to attach it, I don't go to this custom sub list. I, to this cust I go to the custom record and you know, normally you see fields, I go to the sublist field. I then select the name, I then select the sub the safe search I want, create a label, and say what tab I want it on. And here I did need to uh, attach the, the field that I want it linked to. And now if I go to a product release, this is the custom record that we see saw on the PO where it shows all product releases that we send to our vendor. Now I can see um, all the product releases for this associated PO here on this. And then I usually when I create a new product release, I go to one and I, and I make copy. But I, and I can see, okay, there's still room for some because I have 1,934, I have 2,200. You can see the uh, purchase order quantity. And therefore, I know I can create another one. But this allows me to see all of the related uh, releases for this purchase order and whether they've been shipped or not. And that is the examples I wanted to show. I don't know if I, I have no idea how much time I took because we didn't start at 11. So are there any questions that I can answer? And is that anybody still on? I don't know. Yep, I can't we're all that. still here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hoping you can all go away with something that you can maybe apply right away today between what Gary provided and seeing how you can use these custom search sub lists. Awesome. Thank you, Margie. Um, yeah, so I don't think we have any inform or any questions. I don't see anybody chatting anything. Um, so what I'll do is um, I'll post our checkout keyword for the CPE credits. Um, I'll just display my screen real quick, Margie. <clears throat> 